Good day, and welcome to this modified version of worship on this Independence Day weekend. It's Sunday, July 5th, 2020. We are worshiping here in my office. This morning, about 60 people worshiped live in the church's parking lot, but of course we had live streaming issues again, this time on Facebook. And so this will be posted on YouTube as a way for people to worship with us who couldn't be there live. We wanted to thank our neighbors who graciously supported us gathering in the parking lot this morning, as well as Rick Gilbert for letting us use his wonderful sound system so that we could be heard throughout the parking lot. We uh, are planning on some kind of outdoor worship service on Wednesday, July 22nd at 7.30 p.m., either in the back Plymouth lawn or back at the church parking lot. So more details about that will follow in the weeks to come. We have three events coming up on this Tuesday evening. Bible and Brews is meeting on the front Plymouth lawn uh, with uh, social distancing uh, rules in effect, and that'll be at 6.30 p.m. And then we have our weekly online meditation at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And that's abbreviated to just 30 minutes because people can then join a book study on uh, racial justice hosted by our friends at Woodmont United Church of Christ, and that starts at 7.30 p.m. And connect, uh, links to that are also on the church's um, website. You can still sign up your children for Vacation Bible School, which happens in early August this summer, and we are still looking for some Sunday school teachers to take on uh, the important uh, adaptive role of being available for Sunday school, uh, likely at least in part online for Sundays. So please speak with Kelsey or contact me or the church office if you have any interest or questions. Um, Today, the music recordings for Dan's uh, music project are due, and this upcoming Friday, July 10th at 7 p.m., uh, Dan will be um, playing at on a live online organ concert. So that's 7 p.m. on Friday, July 10th. Uh, today, we start a seven-week series on coming to our senses. We will explore how we experience God's love through our senses, and this week I'm asking people if you have any reflections on the sense of touch and how you've had uh, a positive uh, experience of that uh, during your life or especially during the pandemic, you can email me at revadam at firstchurchofmilford.org. Also remember that Reverend Ashley and I have uh, outdoor office hours. You can contact us through a link on the webpage and we can set up a time to meet with you uh, outdoors um, to offer pastoral care or just to um, see how you're doing. Uh, considering all that's been going on. But now we are going to begin our time of worship with uh, our opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God in Christ, you have revealed to us the infinite depth of your love and the way to live in peace and justice together. We freely accept the call of discipleship, which helped provide the founding principles of our country and which con continues to provide the freedom of worship to people of all backgrounds and creeds. May we celebrate our freedoms as humans with respect for those who secured it with their lives. Most of all, we praise you for Christ, who freely loved us and who persuades us to love one another. Amen. And now we're going to sing the first of uh, two hymns as a part of this abbreviated service. This is My Country, Tis of Thee. We're going to sing the first and third verses. Oops. Sorry about that.
Today's scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Jesus uh, is telling the third of three stories that he shares uh, with a group of people after the Pharisees, um, who don't take kindly to Jesus' ministry, uh, complain that Jesus is busy uh, sharing meals with tax collector and other um, uh, other disreputable people. And so the first story that Jesus tells is about a shepherd and a lost sheep. The second story is about a woman and her lost coin. And then we hear today's reading, the third story. So listen now for God's word in an abbreviated reading of the parable of the prodigal son. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. The son traveled to a distant country and squandered his fortune on dissolute living. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens to feed their pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the food that the pigs were eating. But when he came to himself, he said, I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Treat me like your hired hands. But while the younger son was still far off, his father saw him. His father ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Quickly, said the father, bring out a robe and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Now the elder son approached the house and heard music and dancing. Then he became angry. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have never disobeyed you. You have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. You killed the fatted calf for him? The father replied, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. May God have rich blessings to this reading of Holy Word. And will you pray with me? God, may we come to our senses through your word. Amen. I can associate my childhood memories of celebrating Independence Day with all five of my senses. I can taste a hot dog with ketchup and mustard from a backyard party. I can smell the charcoal from the grill. I can smell the sulfur from a sparkler that I got to hold. I can see the fireworks lighting up the sky. I can hear their explosions once sound catches up to the light. I can feel the secure grip of my parents' hands holding mine as we depart the festivities. And I can feel the shoulder of my older brother where I rest my head in the back seat of our Dodge Dart before falling asleep on the way home. This pandemic has deprived us of much of the normalcy that we once had, including the normalcy of a holiday like the 4th of July weekend. It has deprived us of being able to touch and come in close proximity without concern of spreading disease. But in doing so, this pandemic has also stripped away much of how we take the sensory world for granted. How many of us, for example, have taken more walks and looked around at our neighborhood with a fresh perspective? How many of us have heard and seen birds that we never saw before? Emotionally and physically displaced from our routines, we pay closer attention to the world around us now. We have a heightened sense of sounds and sights, smells and tastes, and we long to shake hands and to hug one another. Patience, that day will come. We have come to our senses, in effect. We are engaging our senses and the world afresh. 
Now, some scientists claim that life is essentially just a conglomeration of chemical reactions. Every breath you take, every move you make, every thought that you have can be described by chemicals and like electricity moving through your brain and your body. This is not technically wrong by any means. But as British minister and astrophysicist Bruce Wilkinson points out, that is not a sufficient description of our lives. For example, to think of a kiss as just a chemical or a biological action is not inaccurate, but it's not the whole story. First and foremost, a kiss is often an expression of love. Likewise, life is more than just the sum of our senses. We can't be reduced just to what we have seen or heard or tasted or smelled or touched. As people of faith, we believe that God gives us life to be, fulfilled, to be filled with meaning and goodness. We are endowed by our Creator with unalienable rights and also with unalienable meaningfulness. We experience love and resentment, fear and faith, and so many other things. But our senses are essential in us having the experiences that form into meaning in our lives. And in the weeks ahead, we will be considering each of the five senses. Today, though, we consider the gestalt, the wholeness of our sensory experience and what that does together through Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. In telling this story, Jesus draws us into his sensory-filled imagination. Jesus invites us to experience this story in a tactile and direct way, perhaps identifying with one or all of the characters, or just viewing it in our mind's eye and yet engaging with it as though it is real and sensory. There was a man who had two sons. Already, Jesus has pulled us in with those first few words. Can you see the dad and the sons? I can. And not only can I kind of see a static father and two sons, but also I can see them change. I can see them transform depending on where they're from, when they are from, their personalities, their clothes. This is a story from 2000 years ago during an agrarian age. These folks are farmers. I like to, for the sake of imagination, think of them as stoic German-American dairy farmers from 1970s Wisconsin. I can hear the younger son ask his dad for his inheritance before his dad dies. I can hear the disbelief in the father's response and then see his sad acceptance. I can feel the cold, hard coins pressed into the son's hands, and then I can see him set out for the far country of Las Vegas. There the son is enticed by the bright lights and the sounds of the casino, the slot machines, the intoxicating taste of free drinks, the sweet-smelling perfume of beautiful young women who gravitate towards him and pet his shoulder as he bets his fortune on blackjack. At first, he tastes success. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But then, his fortunes shift. He runs out of money, and the women and the free drinks desert him too. What happens in Vegas is that his money and his dreams stay in Vegas. He heads north out of the city to work for a pork producer, R.C. Farms, which feeds the pigs food that has been thrown out by the casinos. The son helps feed the pigs. Every night he goes into his efficiency apartment and takes a long shower to remove the stench from his body. He gets paid so little he can't afford rent and groceries, and so he eats some of the food intended for the pigs. One day he finds some cast-off Caesar salad. Tasting it, experiences flood his heart. The taste of the salad his mom used to make for the family. The image of his mother in her deathbed. His palpable resentment over his father who never visibly grieved over her death and his older brother who instead of experiencing the tangible sense of grief he poured himself into caring for the farm instead the younger son 
Also at his own desire to be independent and to break free from the painful me memories of his mother. The non-demonstrative, yet now clearly unconditional love of his father, who looked broken-hearted when he left. Those memories all come flooding back to him in that moment. In that moment, Jesus tells us, the son comes to himself. He comes to his senses. He longs to see and to hear and to touch his dad again, no matter how his father might respond. So he hitchhikes back east with just his backpack and the kindness of strangers to sustain him. He gets dropped off in front of the courthouse in his hometown and then has to hike the last mile out of town to his father's farm. What will he say, he asks himself, to his dad to get a job, even as a hired hand there? But when he comes over that last rise and the road slopes down into the dell, his dad spots him. In disbelief, the dad first walks and then shuffles, then runs and then sprints until he can embrace his son in his arms. The son feels his dad's embrace smells his dad's cologne mixed with sweat and dirt. He hears the joyful laughter of his father, and he tastes the salty tears dripping down his own face. First, the younger son came to his senses. Now he has come home, not to the same old home, but to new life. The dad throws a party invites his younger son's friends to come over. Later, the older son gets back from business in the next town over. He sees cars parked in the driveway. He hears a faint thump of music from the house. Boots and cats, and boots and cats, and boots and cats, and boots and cats. He sees his younger brother's backpack by the front porch and smells beef in the air. And then he tastes the bitter irony of the moment. His dad steps out of the front door and sees the anger in his older son's face. Dad, the older brother says, I've never left you because I have always been loyal to our family and our farm. I have put up with your eccentric ways and how you would get lost in thought about him. You've never even thrown me a party. I've never even tasted a goat's worth of gratitude from you. And now, Mr. Unreliable comes back and suddenly it's party time? Dad, come to your senses. The father responds, Son, I know you're angry. Of course, you matter to me. I take nothing away from you by celebrating him. I have come to my senses. Don't you see? Can't you tell? He was lost, and so was our family. But now, now we have found each other. God invites us in this time to take stock of our lives, what we see and hear, taste, smell, and touch, what we have lost and what we and God can find together. God calls us to dive deeply into our hearts to make meaning and especially new meaning and new life through God's grace and forgiveness, through God's justice and reconciliation our freedoms, our blessings, and also a responsibility to share with others. Let us receive the gifts of life and grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And now we come to 
the sacrament of Holy Communion. We come to this table that is defined not by its substance, but by what rests upon it, which is the me of Christ. This is a liturgy based on one written by Marin Tirabasi. Come unto me, says Christ, because any burden is heavy to the one who is under it. Come unto me with the burden of a crowded life or a lonely one. Come unto me with a burden of grief for the death of a beloved person or a companion animal, for an ability that you no longer have or a relationship needing reconciliation. Come unto me with the burden of a disappointment, even one that doesn't seem significant enough to bother with now, or a fear that is deeper than words can express. Come unto the me of Christ with any burden, for here is rest for the weary, a lightening of suffering, gentleness. Here is a yoke of responsibility that can be lifted because of a small piece of bread and a sip of the cup of hope. In your kitchens and living rooms, rest your hands lightly upon these elements which we set aside today to be sacrament. And if you have no food or drink in which to partake, rest your hand on your own shoulder so that you may be blessed. Let us pray. God of the open hand and the gentle yoke, we wait your gift and your service. Send your spirit of life and love, of power and blessing upon your children in every house of worship, so that this bread may be broken and gathered in our freedom to love you and each other, and this cup may be poured out to give hope to all. May you, O Christ, be alive in these elements, and may you, risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We remember the Creator blessed all creatures and all human beings with plants of the ground and fruits of the tree. We remember that the prodigal son's parent received him with more grace and love and gratitude than he could have ever expected. Communion is like that. Always more than we can ever expect. More than any plans can anticipate. We remember other stories of Jesus with unexpected grace, leftover baskets of bread and fish, an unexpected invitation to bless children, an offer to eat at the house of a tax collector, and even the invitation of a thief to enter paradise that day with the crucified Christ. You remember the Passover in Jerusalem when Jesus, in free obedience, unexpectedly expanded the menu to include himself, when unconditional love was on the table. Let us now, at many tables, receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. And now let us, in our many places, receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. Take and drink. Let us pray. O Holy One, we have come unto you with our weariness. You've let go of all in our lives that is heavy. We have handed them to you. We thank you for your grace and forgiveness that embrace us like a parent's hug. Thank you for the gift of time and space in which we live and breathe and have our being. For Christians and for people of all faiths around the world who are not given the freedoms to peaceably assemble or to simply practice their faith. May you bend history towards free expression of love and faith. 
We pray for those who are hurting as we name some now. Jackson, Tucker, Amanda, Mike, Robert, Amy. If it is your will, grant them your healing spirit. We lift up those who grieve as we name some now. Embrace in your everlasting arms those who have died and embrace those who grieve with the consolation that you hope for them, the promise of life eternal. God, we thank you for covenants of love and freedom, such as wedding vows. We give thanks for the anniversaries of Jim and Amy, Joe and Sean, Lindsay and Brian. God, we thank you for the 101st birthday of Angie Ganji this week. We pray that you give safe journey to the Shagru family as they prepare to move. Bless us with the unexpected blessings that you hope for us, that you hope that we will perceive in sight and sound, touch and taste and smell. Keep us safe and healthy in the weeks to come. And now, may we lift up every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring in praise to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now you will sing verses 1 and 3 of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Oh, 